Happy 16 weeks of meds. That is the milestone day today. That is the celebration. So yesterday I went to Valley Village and grabbed a couple of very versatile accessories. Halloween's coming up, but I never really dress up for Halloween. But since Halloween's coming up, they have such a selection. It was crazy. So I grabbed a few things that are really versatile that could come in handy for being crazy happy, for acting like a crazy person, for wondering what a manic would do. A manic would dress up like a rainbow and jump on a trampoline on a beach. Today I'm going to jump on the trampoline by myself to celebrate. And I think I did a pretty good job at selecting what I was looking for.
like these wings because they're really malleable. There's those wings out there that are hard. So this is advice when you're putting together your magical backpack and your alter ego, transconscious, moving to embody your mania and that celebration of life together. And these are great wings. And then I got some of these. And of course I got the rainbow tutu and I got this wig and I also got as you saw the rainbow unitard it's a little bit big in the hips but who can resist a rainbow unitard so I have two costumes and I might wear the rainbow unitard to Boney M on Monday and then I noticed that I accidentally bought two sets of wings and I don't know if I got charged for that probably and I didn't notice until I took both of them off the packaging. So I think it might be a sign that I'm looking for a wing woman. And perhaps the person I'm going to Boney M with will want to wear the second set of wings. But I'm also wondering if I could be playful and go out and look for someone who wants to be magic with me. And when they want to be magic with me and share that magic, then I'll give them the set of wings. So this would be really fun to make some sandwiches for people that are hungry and then go and give them out looking like a rainbow. To make it fun because I did spend a hundred dollars on this stuff. This was eleven dollars, the wings were like fifteen, these were five. I got a mask thing too that is kind of fun and then the tutu and I ended up buying two wings and I don't, I guess I paid for both. I didn't realize I was carrying two sets of wings. So I'm happy that it all fits. The unit heart is a little big in the hip, but I think it just makes it look funny. And so I'll keep it all. And so I spent a hundred bucks and since I did that, I'm going to put a hundred bucks into the crazy, magical, altruistic fund. Because if I spend a hundred dollars on silly and happy stuff for myself and to spread that then I also need to spread the basics like food that's how I feel right now at least so I'll find a way to do that and it's sort of like a one for one program if I spend a dollar on myself something fun for myself then I also want to spend a dollar on something for someone else. I say that now and I'm about to purchase a new iPhone, which is $1,500. But I don't know if that's just for myself. It's not really. Excuses, excuses. So yeah, this is getting comfortable with my magic. I think I need some pink eyebrows and I think I need more makeup to pull this off. And it's not about looking hypersexual, it's actually about fun and playfulness and rainbow and all the colors and that's wonderful. Though I'm sure it'll be misinterpreted, but that's fine. This is also about transformation into my artist self playfulness, having other ways of acting. This changes my epigesturetic matrix. This changes the way people epigesture towards me just by doing this. And then that's why I feel it's also important to wear clothes that we feel good in, put energy and attention into our appearance because it changes the way people respond to us. And we can play with that. We can make it playful as opposed to addicted to having the latest trend or whatever. Why aren't we making our form a work of art and a work of play? We think that art is about painting on a canvas. Well, why don't we use the canvas of ourselves? And I guess people do. They get a lot of tattoos and things. And I am thinking of getting a tattoo. I don't really want one. I remember when I was in the psych ward, trapped in there, April 2016, I drew all over my arms with 
regular pen, but I was writing down words because I couldn't remember who I was or why I was here. So I was writing down like love and beauty and I don't even know what. Too bad I didn't take a picture. And then I washed it off, but I was really, it felt like that movie, I think it's called Memento, where he like puts stuff all over his body because he can't remember anything every day. And I feel like that too sometimes. Like I'll have my calendar, my iCal full of what I need to do. When it gets too full, I take out things that aren't that important to do and put it on a back burner type list but then I forget about all those back burner items and I forget about the ones that are even in my calendar so getting that private embed plugin I'd forgotten about that I was gonna put all the videos on through private embed so that way it can be scheduled so if something happens and I'm not around it will eventually get out there it's like in a little insurance policy but I kind of forget, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be working on that. I've said supposed to a couple times lately, I don't know why, but I mean, that's something I'm working on and needing to write those two things, needing to write that business application. I'm reading a book for that business course called The E-Myth Revisited and then by the end of the day, I'm like, what am I doing? I don't even know. So yeah. So this morning I did 10 minutes of coherence breathing and that was pretty good and last night I woke up at 1 30 because I had to pee and when I got back in bed I actually felt some fear I felt some subtle memes of wondering if I'm really here now wondering if I'm actually on this path of moving towards mastering my mania mastering mental health embodying my mania trans consciousness embodied or if I'm kidding myself and I was confused and then there was some fear and then there was some subtle memes of she went off her meds and did something really bad and it's almost like these thought forms are trying to reattach to my brain and to scare me and I was watching that and my body responded with a little bit of fear but not majorly like like it has in the past it was almost like I was witnessing these thought forms trying to come into play in my in my system some ones that would make sense for me to believe or to think are possible and I watched my body literally like reject them like fight them off like like the herd immunity I've talked about with myself I've heard myself say so many things and I'm embodying moving towards unfolding and manifesting so many of those but then I feel especially after yesterday I was PMSing I read that and wrote that really critical thing about that creativity study and I was feeling good during the day and I was celebrating in the morning so it's like being embodied all over the map of of experiences and gestures and and so-called feelings I wouldn't call them feelings they're more like energies so it's all over this epigestratic and energetic map and that's something new I've never put that energetic part in but I feel like we feel like we move according to feelings but it's more these energies and being aware so since I was all over this matrix and map of energies and gestures yesterday I feel like that's sometimes when I'm vulnerable to fear trying to to come in because I'm at the brink, at the very edge of how powerfully I'm willing to speak because a lot of times I say maybe and oh and I create thousands of memes of context so to speak powerfully on one it puts me further along that possibility line and when that happens there can be some retraction which feels like so-called fear because it's this ebb back and I back forward where is that I don't know but it's like this energy there was a lot of energy in the body to speak in that way and then it, it sort of fizzles out the energy comes and goes and flows and goes into different parts of the brain and body so I was thinking about yesterday 
and partly when I was in bed and maybe as I was falling asleep, I was wondering, because I said that thing about how when I worked in mental health, I started to create with that energy and create more of that for myself by being more a part of that. That's what got augmented as my reality because the creative energy will augment reality. It will augment whatever reality one is moving in. And so when one is moving in a creative, manic, crazy trajectory, it augments that to the point that we've practically created our own reality to the exclusion of others. And there are other people who are in that augmented actuality, but it kind of screws up the collective. So we have to retreat back for the sake of everyone. But if we don't go too far into any particular one, because going too far into a particular one is choosing to go into that direction, which is an act of will, which messes with creativity. So it messes with the natural Gaiac creativity. It turns it into egoic creativity when we get mixed up with the ego. So I was thinking about how even looking at a tweet about mental health, I can write a lot or see a lot in that. And I'm not sure what that is, but I was thinking about how before I worked in mental health, the first three and a half years of my journey after being labeled, I was always laughing, making fun of myself. Then I got a job at a medical clinic and I was always happy and loving and caring and joking with people and smiling. And I worked with someone really fun. So it was all about fun and laughter. And the clinic was about really caring for people and being loving. And so I was seeing that that's what was augmented. That creative energy was likely there, but it was creating with this love energy that was a part of the entire situation and manifested gesturetic matrix, the actuality, the significance that was love in the whole structure of the place was then congruent with epi gesturing and gesturing as love and being caring and smiling and happy. Whereas I can look at one tweet, which is not something actual in manifest reality, but it's on a screen and produce all this abstract words and blah, 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 that feels more like passionate anger or criticism or pointing things out. And there's a place for that for sure. But I was wondering, where can I be love? And I have, and I don't think I've really said the word love, but I was thinking about living with family and being around some little kids and how beautiful and loving they are and witnessing that and that grows that, that grows my relationship and connection with them and that's love and being in the forest and nature. But then this reaction to all this abstraction of mental health, I don't know if it is. And I could do that forever, but if I put myself in that, that creative energy is going to see something and it's going to continue to create with that. And I'm going back to something I said to myself is, what do we put in front of us? And I'm putting mental health in front of me again. And I feel like I can't help it in a way. I feel like... I want to help my neuro tribe and I do want to set that November 6th day of not putting that in front of me as much because I calculated and up from now so about six weeks there are 15 days that I'll be participating in mental health stuff and that's quite a lot that's a big percentage so I want to let that go and plus that could contribute to this all overness of energy because I could be in the love space but then I go into mental health and I'm feeling like Ugh. and even today this morning it sort of arose in my mind that there's this really good peer program where I am and peers work full-time and they work with people who aren't connected to the system to help them connect up to the system so they so these people are likely homeless or they don't have any psychiatrist or clinician or anything like that and there's 
quite a few full-time peers to help these people who have no access to services, access services. And it rose in my mind. It just dawned on me that this is one of the only places where there's full-time peers and there's so much access to peers. And it's because people aren't connected to the system yet. So it's a way to use peers to coax people into getting connected up with services. And once they are, and if they're homeless or addicted to something or whatever, they're likely going to end up on some kind of pharmaceutical. And I'm not saying it's all about that. I'm just saying the system is willing to pay more peers and have a full peer program of peers working full time when it is that they can rake people who are not connected to the system into the system. And one could say, well, they really want people to get help and everything. But I don't know. I just felt it was this coercion because they don't have all those peers like that. When people are already connected up, they don't say, well, we want you to get so much better. So we're going to help you by giving you a peer support worker. People get peer support workers in order to get coaxed into the system. And I really doubt that they are trying to set it up that way. And I don't know if I wanted to talk about that on my celebration day, but it came into my mind and I was thinking, God. And I don't know if that's true, but it just seems a little fishy to me. So yeah, I want to set people free of all of it, not work keeping people in the mental health system and yeah to set people free and since I had that little fear thing in my jig happen I'm going to go to the park today make some juice be embodied I have a lot on my to-do list today and if I can do those things then I can whatever. Happy 16 weeks off.